hello and welcome on in everybody i've got a build video for you guys today sword and shield with throwing hatchet i've been trying out a lot of builds lately and well here's one where i actually got enough footage that uh i thought i'd share the build with you guys it was a lot of fun to play sword and shield has very quickly become one of my favorite melee weapons in this game it has absolutely excellent offensive potential while still retaining a lot of defensive utility and the throwing axe. This is a weapon that I love and I hate at the same time. Throwing axe can deal a ton of damage and it has arguably the best utility out of any ranged weapon in the game. But man, is it hard to hit people with the hatchet. It has a lot of lob to it. It has a lot of time before the projectile actually hits. And uh, it's one of those weapons that I really feel like you got to put the practice in. You got to put the love in to really make it work. And you can see really good results. But it definitely has a bit of a learning curve to it. Of course, if you want to see a written guide to this build, you can find it on my website, pvpnewworld.com. There's a link down below for you. And I feature the New World Top 5 fights. If you have an awesome clip you want to see featured on the channel, you can send that to Christopher at pvpnewworld.com. And last but not least, we've got channel membership now. If you guys love the show and you want to help support it, you can always consider becoming a member. You get access to some emojis and badges. And of course, I'll give all members a shout out at the end of each video. But for the most part, it's just a way for you guys to help support the show if you really love it. But enough of that, let's take a look at that build. Alright, starting off with the attribute points, we've got a mix of strength, dexterity, and constitution. The sword and shield and hatchet both scale primarily from strength, secondarily from dexterity. So this is going to be a great way to get good damage out of these weapons. 150 dexterity for that reduced cost on the roll. Very important for this build and just light armor uh, PvP gameplay in general for your stamina sustain. And then the 10% critical chance. Very important. This build has a very high crit rate, so just stacking more on top of that. And it has good critical damage too. Moving on to the strength side of things, 10% damage on stun slowed or rooted enemies. This build has tons of stun slows and roots, so this is going to be fantastic for outgoing damage. And then uh, the 5% slashing damage, nice for the thrown hatchet as well as the rest of our sword and shield attacks. And last but not least, 10% damage to physical light and heavy attacks. Fantastic for the sword and shield burst in general. 150 con for the critical damage reduction. Super important in PvP, especially if you're going to be playing a build like this solo. We don't have the save passive on the hatchet in this build. So yeah, I think having 150 con helps a lot in that regard. If you did have the save passive, you could get away with running a little bit less constitution though. And then let's take a look at the gear I'm running on this guy. Starting off with the sword, Keen Empowering Leaping Strike and Keenly Jagged. Empowering Leaping Strike gives you a huge amount of damage with the gap closer, and that's going to allow all your sword moves to hit quite a bit harder for the, the duration of that snare. And then, of course, Keenly Jagged, really good for outgoing damage. And uh, Keen is really nice, too, for that increased critical chance. Taking a look at the shield, just because they're kind of a pair here. Um, the shield is Fortifying Shield Rush with Vicious and Sturdy. Vicious, just to make up for the fact that we didn't have it on the sword here. So we got the Keen Vicious combo. And something like Enchanted would be really nice, too. Probably a better option than Vicious or even Rogue. But this is just what I had to work with here. Fortifying Shield Rush is a big deal. 33% um, Fortify is a lot of damage reduction, and that's going to make Shield Rush a very good defensive move. And then, of course, Sturdy for that blocking. And then taking a look at the Hatchet, I've got Keen Speed, Vicious, and Empowering Rending Throw. Keen Speed, of course, fantastic for a ranged weapon in PvP. You get that 20% haste for 10 seconds on a 10-second cooldown, and this build has a super high crit rate and can get guaranteed crits with headshots as well. So... You'll be able to proc this pretty reliably uh, in the course of a fight. And then Empowering Rending Throw. This is the reason that Throwing Axe can deal a lot of damage. You absolutely must have this perk on the Throwing Axe. If you just get a purple one, it's got to have Rending Throw and uh, Keen Speed on it. Vicious as the third perk is not a bad option, but you could go with something like Vorpal or even Enchanted uh, if you prefer that instead. And then taking a look at the armor, I've got two pieces of the PvP Shirking Heels set on, uh, Resilient Refreshing and Shirking Heels, all in light armor. This armor is actually pretty easy to get if you spend a bit of time PvPing every day and just leveling up your reward track. It's a fairly common drop as you get further along in the track. And the next piece here, I actually just have Refreshing and Resilient. This is because I don't have the light armor chest piece for the Shirking Heels. 
And then for the gloves, resilient with the refreshing distance throw. I actually really like the refreshing distance throw. 29% cooldown reduction on it is a pretty beefy amount, and it gives the distance throw about a 10 second cooldown uh, with the other refreshing that this build has if you manage to land it on an opponent that's close to you when you use it. Oftentimes you'll be using this skill when someone's close to you and you want to get away from them anyway. The next piece I have is of course Shirking Energy with Refreshing and Resilient. You gotta have Shirking Energy for a light armor build in PvP, an absolute must. And in general, I did favor Refreshing as the uh, kind of alternative third perk for a lot of my pieces of gear here, simply because the Sword and Shield skills have pretty high cooldowns, so I do like running Refreshing when I play Sword and Board. Moving on to the jewelry, starting off with the amulet. Divine and Health, of course, are the two perks that you want for your amulet. And then for the third, I've gone with Shirking Dot Cleanse, something that's become a favorite of mine over time. Um, there's a lot of dots in PvP right now, and they deal quite a lot of damage over the course of their duration. So being able to purge some of them off uh, saves you quite a lot of additional health. So yeah, I, I do really like this, especially for solo playing. And then for the ring, I've got Hardy Keen Awareness with the Invigorated Punishment. Now, you could go with the perk that increases the duration of cripples, because this build has a lot of cripples, and uh, cripples pretty strong in PvP, so I think that would be a great third perk option if you don't have the Invigorated Punishment one. But this ring, again, you can get from the PvP reward tracks, so uh, you should get it over time as you level up your PvP level. And then for the earring, I've got Healthy Toast, Refreshing Toast, and Regenerating, the best in slot healing item that you can get. Uh, healthy Toast, absolutely massive because mana potions have a very short cooldown. Refreshing Toast, just to reduce everything's cooldown further, and of course, regenerating for that healing over time. And then for the weapons, the gems, I've gone with Opals or the Gambit gem for 15% additional damage when stamina is not full. For a build like this, you're doing a lot of rolling, so that will be pretty often when uh, you have that damage buff up. And then, of course, taking a look at the resists of the build, we've got a uh, big focus on thrust damage and fire damage resistance. And this is, well, because there's a lot of ranged opponents in PvP. Taking a look at the mastery, starting off with Sword and Shield, we got Leaping Strike, we've got Shield Bash, and we've got Shield Rush. So big focus on CC with these two skills, and of course the gap close from Leaping Strike. Cowardly Punishment's going to apply a slow, the Shield Bash will apply a slow, and we get another slow from the last chain of our Light Attacks. So this is going to be great, not only for preventing people from getting away, but we get a bit of bonus damage thanks to the Opportunist passive whenever those slows will land. Invigorating Bulwark, a really nice passive to have um, because I am using both of the Shield skills. And then of course Recuperation for the increased healing on the Sword and Shield bar. Try to make a point of using your potions and stuff when you're on the Sword and Shield bar if you're going to play a Sword and Shield build. And um, moving on to the other side here, Sword and Shield has a lot of focus on heavy attacks, especially the partial charged heavy attack. It's got a lot of lunge distance, deals pretty good damage, and it's very fast to cast, and it will give you the bonuses from uh, heavy attack that you get in the passives here. So that 30% in power, very easy to proc consistently with this build. The uh, Freeing Justice to remove one debuff whenever you land a heavy attack, just pairing with that playstyle even more. And the Necklace as well gives this build quite a bit of anti-condition, which is really nice. Precision, of course, for that more crit chance. Um, confidence for additional damage if we're at full health. This is kind of the flex spot on this side of the tree. You could instead go for counterattack and get the Empower from that instead. And then, of course, Critical Precision for the 20% haste when you land a crit. Very important for this build. Um, with Keen Speed on the back bar and then this on the front bar, we can easily stack some 40% haste, which is very good for PvP. And then last but not least, Leadership for that flat 10% damage bonus. So let's take a look at the Hatchet Tree now. Starting off on the Berserker side, the only thing that I've invested in is Berserk. And, well, that's because this is a fantastic utility skill for uh, any PvP build. You get a heal over time from it, it gives you haste when you use it, you're immune to staggers when you use it, and on top of it, you can break out of a stun by using Berserk, which is a huge deal. It'll just free you from a really dangerous situation if you get caught by it, and uh, there's no other skill in the game that lets you do that, so it's a fantastic utility skill in that regard. And of course, the fact that it just gives you a flat damage increase is nice for uh, putting a little bit more damage into the throwing axes on the throwing axe side of things. Moving on to the throwing tree, we've got rending throw and social distancing throw. I love rending throw. It applies the rend when you hit your opponent. On top of it, 
Thanks to the uh, Empowering Rending Throw perk on the Hatchet, this will increase all of our Throwing Axe damage by 30% on the target. That's a massive damage increase. And I've only gone for the first two passives of it simply because I didn't want to invest into the cooldown reduction. Rending Throw has a very short cooldown already, and it has a really long rend duration of like 14 seconds thanks to the targeted impact. But I did like that it deals additional 20% damage when you have already hit an opponent with a debuff, so that's just going to be good for burst on Rending Throw. Social Distance, of course, a fantastic utility skill for escaping out of crap. Um, it will immobilize or snare your opponent based on how far away they are from you when you hit them with it. And you can even use it offensively by canceling with a forward dodge roll after you use it if you want to uh, take advantage of that side of the skill too. But just a great utility skill all around. And then for the passives, we've gone with every single passive in the hatchet throwing tree, save on fire for the guaranteed critical hit. And I would actually have liked to take this one, but I don't really have anything that I can give up that makes a lot of sense for it. Um, but in general, all these passives are just going to be increasing our throwing axe damage, aim throw to give us the throws, uh, critical chance increase on our throws, critical hits will regen stamina when you hit them, that's a super big deal uh, for the stam sustain side of things, if you're actively landing attacks, you can do a great job dueling at a distance with players, and then refreshing throws for the cooldown reduction, Seeing as this build has a lot of debuffs, the uh, exploitation passive is going to be nice for outgoing damage as well. Hurling Force for more uh, additional damage based on our distance. Adrenaline Rush to have some stamina cost reduction after dodging when you hit an opponent with an ability, especially since Rending Throw is very cheap. This is a, a pretty big deal for stamina sustain. And then of course the final passive here, Hindrance, to uh, extend the duration of debuffs when you hit an opponent. Uh, with a thrown attack and it gives you a damage increase based on the debuffs on the opponent and there you go guys that is the build all right let's get right into that pvp commentary starting off with the first fight here a few players on the flag and i just start by throwing the hatchets with this build you always want to lead with rending throw um, because when you hit that rending throw on somebody then you'll start dealing a lot of damage with your throwing axes either way i quickly close into them i try to hit them with a couple stuns but they start converging on me so i use the sword and board gap closer to quickly escape there and then head up to the top and i pop my berserk right away just to have enough mobility so they can't get on top of me and of course heal up a little bit i try to get back on top of this mage with this stun he goes into his flamethrower i go for the partial charged heavy attack and i'm a little early using the uh, leaping strike there i didn't get both attacks to land but these guys are putting a lot of pressure on me and uh, I'm just forced to try to escape but you see that mad healing power that this kind of a build has berserk is such a good ability keeping me immune to uh, tons of different incoming staggers removing those snares and of course healing me up so I'm able to escape there and these guys follow around the corner again I lead with that rending throw I do manage to land it on the mage here when I swap to the sword and board bar I get the stun on him try to land that heavy attack and a great combo unfortunately I just missed the leaping strike at the end and then these guys still stay in hot on my tail here the social distance throw to break a bit of distance and there you see that combo of the 20% uh, haste from social distance mixed with the keen speed making me very fast and then I quickly jump back on top of this mage, catch him with his stamina down, and I do have my hard stun ready. And there's that nice long distance on the heavy attack. I managed to kill that guy, get staggered by the ice player there, but I hit him with my social distance throw, landing my own stagger on him, getting that speed buff. And then he goes to get the res. I start throwing axes at him and he stops rezzing. Probably a good call because if he just sits there, it's very easy for me to hit him with a lot of damage uh, with the hatchets. And I'm able to finish that guy off with the light attack chain spin um, just to kind of get through the other player on the ground. And the two ranged players end up going into the keep. One of them already at the top shooting me with the musket. It's kind of tricky to have to take a fight like that, but um, I am running a lot of thrust resist on a build like this. And he is not hitting too terribly hard, so I think I'm going to be okay. The healing power is just carrying me through it. But there's the other player throwing the javelin from behind. And now I get uh, in a nasty sandwich. I get hit by a lot of attacks. The ice spike as well. Caught in all the snares. And the berserk just saving me. Giving me that healing power. Chug the potions. And I've got a break line of sight from all these ranged players. This guy ends up charging out with the hatchet. I dodge his incoming uh, feral rush. 
And then I right away try to jump on top of him with Leaping Strike. There you see that Partial Charge Sword Heavy Attack. Such an important move to use with Sword and Shield. And it allows me to stick to him and keep the damage on. Huge damage off the connection on those uh, couple hatchet throws. And he almost goes down to it. And then I managed to bump him there and put him into the life save from the hatchet. And the dot from Sword and Shield just finishing him off. And then this is super unfortunate. Look at how many staggers I get hit by in a row. Gonna end up going down there, but I like that fight. Shows off some of the damage and of course shows off the mobility and utility that this build has as well. Now, moving on to the next fight, I've got uh, some OPR for you guys. Again, fighting quite a few opponents on the enemy flag here and uh, they end up chasing me outside. And the hatchet just doing its shenanigans, keeping me alive, lots of healing power, the social distance throw, landing that immobilize. I actually get a really nice connection with my axes on that guy and put a lot of damage into him. And he keeps charging around the corner, 2.3k crit there as well. Managed to get the stun on sword and shield. And there's that huge crit rate this build has. I think every attack I landed there was a crit. And uh, yeah, even retreating, if you manage to land those hatchet throws, they do a ton of damage and you can really turn around and put some pressure into people. And the red players continue to converge on me and uh, I'm just doing my best to change directions a lot as I roll and try to kite them out. I get caught by the immobilize. I go for the shield rush just to break outside of it and then go for the gap closer as well. And that allows me to quickly get behind the tree. There's a nice stun on that player as he attempts to go for his burnout. And I do manage to connect a throwing axe hit on him, force him to use the potion and uh, Trying to keep the pressure on him as I come around the corner. That was kind of a sloppy heavy attack on the sword and board. And I just keep popping that Berserk. I think in these kind of situations, you can use Berserk either preemptively or use it to break the stuns defensively or snares you get hit by. Um, neither is really a bad option because Berserk does provide a lot of healing. And as you guys can see, these guys just give up trying to chase me. And this is something that uh, I got to stress about a build like this. It's got excellent mobility and excellent utility. You can fight quite a few players and uh, they'll get frustrated after a while and they might leave you alone or split up and give you a chance to pick some off. So I head back towards the inside of the keep here and there's two players on the inside. My leaping strike just tracking into the unspawned uh, thing there instead of the player, but I keep trying to keep the pressure on these guys. But two fire mages, they're just throwing a lot of fireballs into me and um, I'm gonna have to break a little bit of distance from them and sit at the top here. This guy ends up holding still. I'm not sure what he's doing, maybe looking at a menu, but we do get to throw a lot of hatchets into him and very quickly bring his HP very low. He ends up panic blowing his stamina. I quickly go for the leaping strike. Big damage on that guy, uh, following up with the light attack after that stagger. And then the enemy blunderbuss player ends up going for the stun. I managed to quickly roll out of that. And then I get caught by the gravity well. There you see uh, Berserk coming in super handy. Just quickly pop it. It removes that snare and immobilize and I'm able to get behind the pillar here and just have this kind of one-on-one -on -one fight with this guy. I'm getting good damage in these exchanges. Using using those uh, partial charged heavies, there's the stun off the sword and board, and then I try to get behind him for another heavy attack, but he does a good job blocking it, and that was a bad social distance throw. I just knocked myself off the edge. We would have had the opportunity to uh, do some work against that melee fighter, and these guys end up running off here, but uh, they turn around, they see me coming, I chase, and I managed to... Nope, didn't land the hard stun there, I actually went for a shield rush, he did have the uh, grit up, so I don't get the stun. These guys are trying to keep the pressure on me, there I catch him with the stun in the middle of his light attack, just trying to time that on him. And uh, I do manage to get a bit of pressure into him, but unfortunately he goes right into his block. And the other players uh, just keeping his pressure on me with the Fire Staff and Rapier as well. But I catch him with his stamina down, feed him a few heavy attacks, forcing him to use his heals. And I catch him with the Social Distance Throw Immobilize in the middle of the Burnout. And uh, this guy actually caught with his healing on cooldown right now. There's this stun. I try to hit the Light Attack. Unfortunately, he has Repost ready. And I was so close to finishing this guy off. He ends up running off the side here. And there you see my hate relationship with Hatchet. He's going to escape simply because I'm too inaccurate at that distance to hit him with it. And um, yeah, now I got to deal with these two anyway. I do find, however, Flamethrower is pretty easy to deal with because we can just stay out of range of it and then quickly switch to Sword and Shield and put a lot of stun pressure uh, on a mage who's trying to do that. So uh, he's not going to be able to counter us with that. There's a beautiful connection on the Leaping Strike and then the hard stun to follow as he tries to go for the Burnout. 
and a quick little chuck of rending throw to finish him off. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching. Of course, if you want to see that written guide, you can find it on my website, pvpnewworld.com. Give me a follow on Twitch if you want to catch some live streams, and give me a follow on Twitter if you guys want to keep up to date with me. I feature the New World Top 5 fights. If you have an awesome fight or a build that you want to see featured on the channel, you can send that to Christopher at pvpnewworld.com. This show is sponsored by What the Fast, a VPN for gamers. A huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon for supporting the show, and a huge thank you to all of the new members for supporting the show as well. I'm sorry I don't have your names up yet. I uploaded this video a little bit ahead of time, but you will see your names in the future. And as always, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed, and have a great night, everybody.